Hi, my name is Paula Jennings, founder of Unum Evolution. You are listening to the Sunburst podcast. Today's episode, we are going to explore our programmed beliefs. So what we what are the things that you believe about yourself? What are the things that have shaped you? And maybe discover a belief that doesn't fit anymore. So we're constantly growing. We're constantly becoming better versions of ourselves and making choices to do so. And in that journey, one of the most powerful times in my life is when I started to, I guess, deconstruct and to really look at what were the beliefs, what are the main beliefs I had about myself. And it really opened me up to discovering how I was limiting myself. I truly believe that we are infinite potential as human beings. I believe in our divinity, in our creativity, in our ability to create from nothing. But I didn't always believe that. I certainly did not believe that about myself. I grew up in Dublin in a family of four. I was the third in the family. And I I guess my role in the family was to be the, I used to say the involuntary peacekeeper. Uh, my perception was that I was the one who needed to keep everybody happy and to make sure that everybody got along. Um, at a quite a young age, I guess, one of the discoveries that I made about myself, about who, about what I believed about myself, um, was that I was not good enough. So I just, I guess, I lived with that belief for pretty much my whole life. I mean, up until I was about fifty, I believed that I wasn't good enough. That's where I operated from, and that created this behavior, these mechanisms that had me always looking to do more, striving, pushing, you know, even to the point of burnout, self-sacrifice, trying to make everybody around me happy and getting exhausted in the process. So when I was young, um, I was labeled in my house, the disaster area. I was the child who had you know, as my mother used to say, hung up her clothes on the floor. Um, I wasn't particularly an organized child. I was brilliant in school. I was really very smart and always excelled without a huge amount of effort. Um, but that was not recognized in my home. I don't think that anybody saw that in me. I was literally the disaster area. So this label was something that I played out. This belief about myself that, I don't know when it started, but it was pretty deep. And it played out in everything I did as a child um, and everything I did as I grew up. And so when I reflect back on it, I think, wow, that, was, that wasn't really that cool, right? That wasn't that nice. And I also recognize that being labeled that has had a, a huge influence in pushing me forward to become the best person that I can be. Sometimes we need to be pressurized. We need to be pushed down so far. And that was my life path that we then emerge as, you know, the shiniest person that we can be. That diamond, like if you think about a diamond being pushed down in the earth, it's not a diamond until it's under so much pressure. And so I can understand that now, um, and I'd love to share with you a little bit about how I discovered this belief and what, I, what I've done, strategies that I have done to reverse that belief or to accept it, I guess, and to understand how it brought me to where I am today and why it makes me really well-placed to do what I do, which is to coach and to, to really have women understand their true essence and the true potential that lives within them. So when I was in my, I guess when I was about five years ago, when I was in my 
um, late 40s, I was introduced to a program. It was a transformation program by my good friend Tahera Hamdani. And we had worked together. I was in, in um, the financial services industry. And Tahera called me up one day and it said to me, I'm doing this course. I'd love for you to, to do it. Now, her phone call was timely. I had just... Um, exited a 25 year career. And also my career of 19, my marriage of 19 years was also um, just had come to, had come to an end. It hadn't ended, but we had decided that that's the way we were going. So immediately I have a very, I'm lucky. I have a very strong sense of, of in my gut. I've always had that sort of knowing if something is proposed to me, if it's right for me, I usually know. So I didn't ask too many questions. I thought, let me go. So it was a weekend course. Actually, there was three, two weekends and then a, another 90 days. And during the first weekend, it was a real discovery of, um, of myself. It was the first time I'd really ever taken a full weekend just to think about me, <laughs> just to explore what my behaviors might be. And of course, all of those behaviors were amplified in this setting. You know, I was walking into a room with like 60 people I didn't know. When I look back and I'm like, I don't even know how the hell I did that, but I did. I showed up and I started to unravel through this training some of the beliefs that I had. And certainly this belief of that being a disaster area and this fundamental, I think it was a fundamental feeling that I was lacking in something, that I did not, you know, that I was flawed. Yeah, that I was flawed. And so I started to recognize how that belief was keeping me in this very small box. And operating from that box was was exhausting because I was operating from a place that I wanted to be liked. I, I thought I was never enough. So I kept on striving to be more in everything I did. I really believe that how we do one thing is how we do everything. So during the course of this weekend, I explored my relationships. I explored, well, actually explored myself. And I started to come up with what were the things, the belief systems? And we all have belief systems. We have stories about money. You know, I had I have an incredible money story that I want to share in, 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 in one of the next episodes. We have stories about how we, how we are in relationships. We have stories about, um, you know, how successful we are or can be. And where those stories start to impact us in a, in a, I guess, in a way that's limiting is what I wanted to dive into. What were the stories that were limiting my own fulfillment of my potential? And this one about being a disaster area came up immediately. It's like, wow, I have created such coping mechanisms around this fundamental belief that I was a disaster area. And I would because I believed it so deeply, I would create situation after situation after situation where I proved myself right. So as humans, we want to be right usually. And I started to, to recognize that and to recognize the sacrifices and the payment, what I was paying. So we, when we have a belief system or something about ourselves that we have made up our minds that isn't really true, we quite often, when we start to look at it, we start to recognize, oh my God, believing that has cost me a lot in terms of my relationships. So believing that cost me my health, you know, we, especially during these times to be recognizing how important our health is. I was not healthy. I was a smoker. I was, um, I couldn't stick to any program. I never, I would stop and start things all the time. I was, you know, I would, I did, I did everything, yoga, aerobics, you name it, but I couldn't, I never trusted myself enough because I had this belief that I wasn't good enough to continue and to show up consistently doing the same thing. I couldn't, nothing stick, no, nothing was sticking. Um, and so I started to recognize that all of these mechanisms, all of these coping mechanisms I put in place were just purely because I thought I wasn't good enough. And from that weekend, I started to, like when I had woke up to that, I start the first weekend, the first Monday after that course, I'll never forget it. I went down to have a cigarette 
and I hadn't been smoking all weekend and I really wanted one. So I went out to my garden because my kids didn't really know that I smoked. And I came back in and my son, I went to hug my son and he said to me, mom, why are you killing yourself? And it hit me. It really hit me. I recognized that this feeling of unworthiness had me feel that I wasn't worthy to even be here. I wasn't worthy to take a good breath in my lungs. And I recognize now that part of that also was, you know, a belief system that was passed down from my father who didn't take care of his health. And I think ultimately had so much pain in this life that he had a hard time being here. So he did everything he could in some ways to check out, you know, he checked, he, he died at 72. And so when Ben said that to me, I said to him, I looked him in the eye and I said, you know, I will not smoke today. And then the next day, and it's literally, I took it day by day, moment by moment. And eventually, like every day I would text him, I was going to work, I would say, Ben, I didn't smoke today. I won't smoke today. And that connection, that connection to my son that wasn't there because I wasn't feeling good enough started to build that trust in me, that trust in myself that I could actually take care of myself and not be the disaster area, but be, fulfill my potential. That was the beginning of it. So this week, I'd love to encourage you or I encourage you to start to examine perhaps one belief that you have about yourself that is limiting you and maybe causing you to not have the deepest, most fullest life or relationships. And I'd love to hear from you about how that goes. You can find me, Paula Jennings 108, on Instagram and Facebook or on my website, Paula Jennings 108. Eight. No, sorry, Paula, Paula, Paula at paulajennings.com. And this week, I wish you the best week. Keep your vibes high. <laughs>